Thank you, Danny, and thank you, Adam. To the Board of Governors, the President, distinguished platform party graduates and guests, uh, it is wonderful to be here this morning, and, uh, and I am so very grateful for this award. And I'm also honored to be able to say a few words to you, the grads of 2016. This is an amazing day in your life, something you should celebrate and something you should be very, very proud of. Now, as Adam mentioned, I had the privilege of working at BCIT for many, many years. And I feel very lucky for that. I started back in the early 70s when the Institute was very, very young. And, and yes, I'm definitely showing my older age. And back then, both staff and students in many programs still had to wear ties as part of a dress code. It was a very different era. And when I started as a teacher, I wasn't any older than many of you. And I remember being a bit intimidated by that. So in my first lectures, I actually found myself trying to lower my voice so I sounded a little older. <laughs> but then I soon realized that being nervous in a new job is just part of life. And, and you have to have confidence that you're there because you can do it. So BCIT has been a big part of my life. I met my wife Kathy here. Our oldest daughter Kelly attended the broadcast program and now works here. I also had many amazing colleagues over the years, one of which is Danny Catt, our MC today. And from the beginning, BCIT has always been a great institution and a very unique one because of its applied nature. And yet, as good schools must do, it has continued to evolve in many positive ways. Now, the credential bestowed upon you today will certainly prepare you for a very successful and rewarding career. But that same educational experience will also enable you to play a broader role if you so choose, one in which you could help to influence and shape your profession, your community, the province, and maybe even the planet as a whole. I've always believed that institutions are measured, perhaps more than anything else, by the contributions their grads make to their fields and to society. And all of you will have a chance to do your part, just as so many other past BCIT grads have done. Now, as Adam mentioned, uh, I've spent much of my life traveling down rivers. Rivers like the Mekong, the Nile, the Yangtze, the Amazon, and our very own Fraser, to name just a few. And those trips provided many memorable and even life-altering experiences. But those same trips helped to cultivate a deeply held view that rivers are lifelines in the truest sense. Far more life of all kinds resides closer to rivers than away from them. And yet we often don't treat them or respect them as we should. And I do believe that the protection of rivers and our water resources in general is our planet's most pressing environmental challenge. In effect, rivers are the arteries of the planet. And I see a river like the Fraser is literally the heart and soul of our beautiful province. And having spent so much time on the Fraser, I've come to see a lot of parallels between the characteristics of a river's course and the stages all of us go through in our own lives. A river like the Fraser, as an example, runs for 1,375 kilometers, and yet begins as just a very small stream flowing off of Mount Robson. And then as it carries on, it gets bigger and faster and wilder, perhaps a stage that some of us have gone through. And having paddled the river's full course, I've seen those wilder sections firsthand up close. And as happens in life, when you hit wild rapids, your boat flips on occasion. And when that happens, you simply have to right your raft, you get back in, and you carry on. Then as the river nears its end, it moves a little slower, becomes a little broader, perhaps meanders a bit before reaching the sea. So a river's journey can be much like our own personal journey. And looking out at the grads in the audience, if I equated the stage of your life right now to, let's say, a map of the Fraser River, most of you would still be up in the river's upper reaches. So you still have a long way to paddle and much to do. Now, in those exciting and fun years you have in front of you, I'd like to offer six brief thoughts or notions that I subscribe to that perhaps you might choose to embrace along the way. One, dare to pursue a dream. Now, graduating from BCIT certainly fulfills one of those dreams, a great dream. 
But there will also be other aspirations in future, and whatever those are, big or small, pursue them. That's something my dad told me long ago when he saw how enamored I was with rivers and the outdoors. And as a little boy, I remember being so captivated by moving water. I could literally explore a creek for hours, turning over rocks, looking for critters and fish. Then as a teenager, I got into paddling in a big way. And by then I knew if at all possible, I wanted to spend my life trying to protect rivers. It was a dream at the time. But that's how many things we do in life begin. You then have to decide to pursue it and make it a reality. Number two, dare to explore. In my early 20s, I tended to interpret the word exploration in a much more traditional sense. And back then, to me, it meant traveling to wild rivers and wild places. But as I got older, I came to view the word in a much broader sense a word that also means exploring new paths, investigating new methodologies, simply trying to do things in a better and more effective way. And from that perspective, all of us can and should be explorers. And I have no doubt that most of you will be. Number three, dare to look at things, not so much as what they are, but what they should be. For example, when I came to BCIT, way back in the early 70s, Gishon Creek in that beautiful southeast corner of campus, which many of you have walked along, back then it looked nothing like it does now. Back then, both the creek and the area around it was barren and damaged, and the stream had become virtually a lifeless drainage ditch. Yet back then, we also talked to elderly residents who remembered how beautiful the creek had been back in the 1920s and 1930s. So we thought, wouldn't it be neat to reclaim it? and bring it back to what it once was. And thanks to the efforts of students and staff, we made great headway. The area is now a green oasis, the creek has a vibrant trout fishery, and last fall we actually had a few salmon return to the upper creek for the first time in 60 years, which was amazing. So whatever you do in life, at some point there will be an opportunity to change something, something for the better, to make it what it should be. Four, do your part for the environment. In both your personal and work life, do your best to recycle, conserve energy, use water wisely. Also, each of us in this room buys things every day. So my hope is that more and more of us will practice conscious consumerism and give thought to the ecological footprint of the products we use as examples. Many of you are already making selective choices in the food you buy. And who would have guessed a decade ago that there would now be a very significant market for things like organic products, free-run eggs, certified sustainable foods. And as our new film, River Blue, will point out in September, it'll open at the Vancouver International Film Festival. I'm hoping in future we'll be just as selective about the clothes we buy. Because the fashion industry, from textiles to leather to denim, is a major polluting industry, and it particularly affects rivers. So it's a sector where we have to embrace new ways, be more sustainable, more ethical. And by asking questions and being more discerning as consumers, we can all help to attain positive change. Number five, Ensure nature remains part of your life as well as the little ones you may be connected to. We are so lucky to live in a province where the natural world is not far away. Take advantage of that. I think that's so important to our mental and physical health. Being outside makes us happier and it keeps us connected to the real world. Just as importantly, exploring a park or a local creek with a child is simply a great way to spend time with them and it's something I love doing with their grandkids. Yet many children grow up in today's urban environment with little exposure to the natural world. And if that continues, I worry that the next generation may lose that link to nature and may be less likely to appreciate the importance of protecting the environment. And finally, number six. In the years ahead, there will be periodic challenges of all sorts but I hope you'll always retain that optimism that's in you today. Sure, at times that may be easier said than done, 
But optimism is simply the tendency to believe. And without it, roadblocks can seem almost insurmountable. I think back to my own travels and some of the disturbing things that I've seen, from pollution and terrorism to illness, hunger, and thirst. So it would be easy to be pessimistic about the future of the planet. But I've never come to that point. In fact, I'm optimistic, sometimes cautiously so, but I am optimistic about the future. And a major reason has to do with the many young people I've had the privilege of working with. And so many came from BCIT. Young people that were energetic, committed, principled, and passionate. So in the end, when push comes to shove, I do believe we'll do the right thing as a society. And your generation will play a huge role. The road ahead won't always be smooth. At times, it'll seem like some of those big turbulent rapids on the Fraser that I mentioned earlier. But that's the nature of the times. Bottom line. We live in one of the most beautiful and vibrant places on the planet. And when you couple that with new grads like yourselves taking on an increasingly prominent role, it's hard not to be hopeful about what lies ahead. You'll achieve great things. Thank you.